Now we're in the middle of a chapter on systems, but really it's all kinds of things that are connected to systems. And we've obviously been talking about matrices. You have a thinker assignment. I hope you're thinking through that. There could be something we do today that's helpful. Um, that's fine. If you've already finished the assignment, that's fine too. I'm going to give you a little more tomorrow. Remember, I'm going to give you some work time tomorrow on that assignment and the extension that I give you. So there's another magic. There's a, something else that's magical about the matrix. And to kind of discover that, we're going to look at this matrix problem. Now, on the surface, there's nothing honestly really new about this. I mean, you, why don't we just kind of work through this together? Uh, but once we work through it, we'll come back and realize, wait a minute, there is something kind of special about this. So you might have a problem like this on the assignment. Um, you might even feel like that we've kind of done a problem like this a time or two. Again, why don't we just kind of work through this together? It's a multiplication problem. Uh, I would hope that you're catching on that matrix multiplication is this kind of interesting row times column strategy. Now, there is only one column here, um, but it certainly contains X and Y. So we seem to be on the right track. And we are. There's nothing. There's no catch here. I hope that you would plunge in and get 5X, 4Y, and negative 3. Okay, and it actually works out in a similar fashion when you take the next row. You only have one choice to do this column, but of course this time it'll equal a negative 24. So again, on the surface, nothing here seems too terribly special. But just kind of hang in there because, again, you'll be glad you came today. So what do you think? Um, what would you guys do? What would you do, Genevieve, with this system? Are you already... On your way to solving it? Okay. So, all right, good. So you're a five and four person. Cancel out the Y's. Why don't we do it that way since Genevieve gave that uh, pointers? And we get ourselves a nice little opposite. We get the Y's to be opposites. What's the numbers that you're getting here, Gabby, when you... Okay, we'll be our calculator person here. Um, we got 25 and 12. Now you're just adding those because we already have opposites. All right, so we have 37. Of course, the Y's disappeared. What's going on over here with these cope with these constants? Two negatives. Yeah, sure. Negative 111. All right. And does that divide nicely with 37? I hope. Can you give us one more computation? Negative 3. And Julia, did you plug negative three back in? How's that going? Oh, okay. So you plugged in the first equation, got negative fifteen four y and negative three. All right. So nice little integer answer or a pair of integers for our answers. All right, is everybody happy? But maybe you're saying, okay, Ms. Naylor, but uh, thought there was going to be something sort of magical here. Well, let us proceed. Okay, when you guys are ready, let's proceed. I always like to have everybody kind of feel like you're, you're ready to go. We can make one 
pretty obvious observation here. If we go back to this matrix problem, this matrix problem. First of all, this matrix problem actually was a system. I mean, let's state the obvious. This was a matrix problem, but it actually was a system. Well, it turns out that if we say that backwards, if we sort of say the converse of that, we have something even more powerful. That is that this matrix problem, or excuse me, this system problem was actually a matrix equation. Let me say that again. This system was actually a matrix equation. And it turns out that every system can be a matrix equation. Every system can be turned around to be a matrix equation. What that means is, let's dig a little deeper into this matrix equation. Okay, because this matrix equation, if you start to look at it, is really just made up of three simple matrices. Now, it's often, oh, it's not often, but we, it's true that we call this first matrix, matrix A. Sometimes we'll put little brackets around it to emphasize. This next matrix, we like to call it matrix X. When we say X, we mean more generally just the variables. And in this third matrix, we like to call it B. And we have ourselves a really simple equation that says A times X equals B. Now, again, make sure that you're following my little thought pattern here. We have a system. I know you know that. We have a system. But that system is actually this matrix equation. And it turns out that if we could solve this matrix equation, let me say that again, if we could solve this matrix equation, then we would have, in fact, solved this system. Okay, now to do that, we have to make a couple more observations. First of all, matrix A isn't just any old matrix. I mean, you see the numbers in it, 5, 4, 3, negative 5. Do you see how it's connected to your system? It's not just coincidence. The numbers in matrix A are always going to be the coefficients. We actually call it the coefficient matrix. Matrix A will be the coefficient matrix. Now, again, that means that the numbers in A, 5, 4, 3, negative 5, they're the coefficients of my system. Matrix X, as we kind of already said, matrix X is basically made up of the variables. So we call it the variable matrix. And then look at matrix B. What kind of math name could you give to matrix B? It's got negative 3 and negative 24. But those aren't just like any old numbers when you come over here to this system. Okay, those are the only numbers that are without variables. In math, we call those constants. Constants. So matrix B is the constant matrix. Okay, stay close because we're getting closer to sort of the big reveal. We have a matrix equation. It's certainly connected to this system. But the argument is, why don't we solve this? You say, what do you mean solve it? I mean solve it for x. You mean, could we divide both sides by a? Well, if you think about it, we've never learned how to do matrix division. So we actually can't divide by a. But we can still do the inverse. We can still do the inverse. Because we actually have a matrix inverse. It's literally the inverse of a. It's the inverse of A. Now, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying this side by the inverse of A. So I can go over here and multiply this side by the inverse of A. I don't like how I really squeezed that in there. Um, but make sure that you see that I multiply both sides by the inverse of A. Now, that's in lieu of division because we don't have matrix division. But the outcome is the same because when you take a matrix times its inverse. Now, this is like a little detail, a little theory detail. 
when you take an inverse, a matrix times its inverse, you always get the identity. And the identity is of the same sort of um, theory that these matrices canceled out. But technically, they canceled out to be the identity, leaving me with just matrix X equaling the inverse times B. To simplify this a little bit, we literally get X equals A inverse times B. Again, to simplify this, we end up with X, matrix X, equaling A inverse times B. Now, if you're wondering again what happened to the identity, the identity behaves like the number one. When you multiply the identity times something, you just end up with that something. You basically end up with the identity disappearing. Now, that formula that's got a box around it, that formula's got a box around it. That's your matrix mystery sort of unveiled today. What matrix mystery? A inverse times B. A inverse times B. Whenever I wheel this old thing over here, that means we're going to do something on the calculator. What are we going to do on the calculator? Well, we're going to do A inverse times B. Okay. Now, I encourage you to play along, but make sure you kind of know what game we're playing here. We're going to play the game of A inverse times B. Now, that means you have to type some, some A's and B's into your calculator. I'm talking about matrix A, you know, like the original matrix A, you know, the coefficients. So I'm putting in 5, 4, 3, negative 5. Matrix A all tidied up in there. And we're going to put in matrix B. Be careful, matrix B is a 2 by 1. And I'm talking about the good old matrix B. You know, the constant matrix. It had negative 3 and negative 24. Okay, so we've got A, we've got B. But the big reveal is A inverse times B. Now I'm going to let you do it, but the thing that you're supposed to be doing is multiplying A inverse times B. And what do you get? You get the X and Y. Wait, you mean the X and Y from the system? Wait, you mean we solved the system using a matrix? Let me say that again. We solved the system using a matrix? Yes. Because the, real, the reveal, the sort of little mystery here, is that any system, even the system that we already solved, and we solved it using some basic elimination, but any system can be solved using a matrix, or more specifically, using the magic matrix formula, A inverse times B. Make sure you realize that that's how we can solve a system. You might want to even add that down here, that that's how we solve a system. So we can solve a system using matrices, specifically using A inverse times B. Now, I didn't see anybody jump up and down too much because maybe you don't quite realize just how neat this can be, but... Okay, so now you're starting to kind of realize that you have a calculator tool that can solve a system, right? The answer to that question on the test, it'll be such that you'll have choices. So calculator might be a choice. Um, I might also make a choice and say you must solve two of these problems kind of like without the calculator. 
So, but the truth is you now have another tool. It's nice. It's the calculator. It solved the system for you. Um, and it can handle any system. Now, I don't know what you think about this system. Maybe you look at that and say, oh, I could solve that. I, you probably could solve that, but I want to make sure you realize that we can also solve this using matrices so that you too can kind of say, no problem. And maybe on the test, you know, you solve this with matrices. Now, maybe you copy down the system. That's great. Uh, I'm going to choose to start the problem with the matrix method. And uh, I realize some of you are already catching on. You're already putting something in your calculator. That's fine. Um, usually, when we're using the calculator, you still want to show some work. The work would be, what did you put in your calculator? So, oh, matrix A, it's the coefficients, right? What coefficients do you see up here? Well, it's just the numbers in front of X and Y. Okay, it's not supposed to be really a trick question. Do you see negative 1 and 14? I'm sure you see those. Now, in the second equation, you got to be a little careful, right? A little careful. There's an expectation here, or I should say kind of an unspoken truth, that you have to organize the problem. So, X and Y, X and Y, again, I'm talking about 6, then 12. Again, you must organize it. Okay, so we see, I hope we see 6 and 12. That's your matrix A. And how about matrix B? We called it the constants. There's something implied by the constants. That is that they are on the other side of the equal sign. So uh, when you see that negative 4, you have to kind of say, wait a minute, not negative 4, but... It's really a four because, again, it has to be on the other side of the equal sign. And then zero. There's nothing wrong with zero. Sometimes zero gets a bad rap. But zero is a constant, and it would be what is on the other side of the equal sign. Magic matrix time. Okay, and I say it like that because uh, you're allowed to do this. It's actually our new tool. It's our new tool for solving systems. Okay, be careful. You know, it's nice being able to use technology, but type it in right. Make sure that um, it's organized, although we kind of already did that thinking. And A inverse times B gets the call. So I call A inverse times B, and it picks up and says, no problem. It says x equals and y equals. By the way, x equals y equals because that's the order that we created our matrix. Since I put x first and y second, then my answer is going to come out like that. Now, those decimals aren't too bad. Um, I think we know that that's negative a half and, and a quarter. But I wanted to show you because there's going to be some problems you do where the decimal is like a big blah mess. Um, if you uh, where is it? If you activate the regular math menu, have you guys used that before? It's the third button down. It's the regular math menu. And the first option is typically the most common to change something to a fraction. It's like the old fraction button on your calculator. And I just wanted to show you that it can change a, a matrix to a pair, to a set of fractions. I'm going to say that that's nicer. That's kind of what we want to see. Um, especially since the calculator makes quick work of it. Obviously, we already knew it was a negative a half and a quarter, but you guys are going to get some problems that the fractions are kind of a mess. Let's make sure you get the idea. And then I do have a little assignment for you, but, well, just one more problem. And I think you'll say, I'm ready to do this. Maybe you want to uh, give a little more input on this, but I'll, I'll follow up, make sure that you're right. Be careful. I don't think I would type it right into the calculator. I would definitely do something on paper.
remember some of the things we just said verbally. You have to have it organized. That implies in this problem x, y, then z. There's also something that I haven't said, but it's kind of also implied that it's always going to be a square matrix. Matrix A is always going to be square. Maybe you just want to double check the first row. It looks like you guys have it, but you definitely need a zero in there. Okay, that's the coefficient on Y. Again, just take a peek up at the board. I simply recorded matrix A and B using zeros as placeholders, being careful about organizing the first equation so that five is on the other side. Again, it's a three by three matrix. It's got to be a square. And of course, matrix B has to match up in a similar fashion. It's going to be a three by one. I'm kind of wondering what you're thinking. Sometimes, the honest, sometimes an honest student says they almost feel bad doing this. Well, don't feel bad. It's not cheating. It's awfully nifty. Okay, it's actually one of the main purposes of a matrix. It can solve a system. And especially when you have computers and calculators, you can make quick work of that. Okay, now we could do this by hand. We could solve this system, or excuse me, this matrix by hand, but that would require doing an inverse of a three by three. We actually haven't learned that, I guess. Um, but uh, you're always going to have the ability to, to use a calculator when, when you have, when I ask you to use a matrix method. Okay, and this becomes like a legit solving tool. You could and can use a matrix to solve a system. It particularly makes quick work of everybody's favorite decimals and fractions. Okay, but know your technology. Let me know if I'm doing something that you're having trouble with. This is so much better presenting this answer as three fractions. And so I, I would like to see you do that when you end up with decimals. Well, are you glad you came today? One thing I do a little different in this chapter is we start to move away from just traditional nightly homework. There's nothing wrong with nightly homework. Sometimes you need that to practice. But most of the grades in this chapter are now going to be like assignments. Now you have a big matrix assignment, but you're also going to feel that uh, almost daily you end up with like a, just like a daily assignment. And it's just kind of my way of saying, hey, if you're going to do this, let me give you some points. Let's kind of make it worthwhile. So these things are things that will be turned in do them in a place that you can turn them in, whatever that looks like for you. Okay, this one happens to be a few problems out of the book. And then notice that I made up a problem. Make sure you understand that the little application, the, the, the three blue statements is also part of this assignment. Now there's a digital version of this on my website. If you just go to today's date, if you don't want to take a picture of that, but geez, you might get this done before you go too. But again, I have a digital version of this assignment on my website under today's date. So you'll see the exact same screen 